Hi everyone, Mrs V here. And looking at this car, the engine is not in a good state. This car is burning its petrol through incomplete combustion. And that is meaning that the full energy value of the fuel is not being released. And look at all that pollution. Let's get our whiteboard on and find out more about this incomplete combustion. Incomplete combustion is a problem because it does not release enough energy from the fuel and fuel is expensive. If you are paying for fuel or if you are in a position where you're about to get your license and you will start paying for fuel, the last thing you want to do is waste one bit of energy present in that expensive fuel. So what you want is complete combustion of your petrol. So complete combustion, we talked about in our last video, is a reaction with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So we learned how to balance equations for complete combustion. And we knew that the products were always going to be carbon dioxide and water. When it comes to incomplete combustion, we always produce water. But the carbon containing product changes to either carbon monoxide or carbon, which is soot. And that's what causes the smoky exhaust. So let's have a go at balancing some incomplete combustion reactions. So two different types. First of all, the one that um, occurs when you've got moderate amounts of oxygen, and that is forming carbon monoxide. So this is moderate oxygen. So not plentiful oxygen, just moderate. And if you form carbon, then you know you've got very limited oxygen. So this is a way for those combustion reactions to still occur in the presence of less oxygen. Balancing these equations, we use the same method that we use to balance the complete combustion equations. So we use the fact that all of the carbon ends up in the carbon containing product and all of the hydrogen ends up in the water. So let's have a go at this now. So all of our eight carbons in the octane are going to end up in the carbon monoxide. So we need eight carbon monoxides and all 18 hydrogens have to end up in the water. So we're going to need nine H2Os. Doing our count from the eight carbon monoxides, we get eight oxygens. And from the nine waters, we get nine. So all together, we're looking at 17 oxygens, which means we need 17 halves of the O2. Again, we can get rid of the fractions by multiplying throughout by two. Two octanes plus 17 oxygens gives us 16 carbon monoxides and 18 waters. Putting in our states, liquid for octane, gas for oxygen, gas for carbon monoxide and liquid for water. So nothing new there. You might notice though, that comparing the amount of oxygen in the equations, there's less oxygen required for an incomplete combustion. So less oxygen required here. And that's why an incomplete combustion equation occurs or reaction occurs when you don't have plenty of oxygen. Let's have a look at what happens if we really limit the oxygen. In this case, we're gonna form carbon or soot. So again, all of the carbon from the octane has to end up in the products, so that's eight carbons, and all of the hydrogen has to end up in the water, so we still have our nine H2Os. This time, however, we don't need any, we don't get any oxygen from the carbon containing product, and we have nine waters. So, all together, then nine oxygens to find, which means we need nine halves of the oxygen molecule. Again, multiplying throughout by two, we get two octanes 
oops, C8, not C18, C8H18 plus nine oxygens producing 16 carbons and 18 waters, putting in the states, liquid, oxygen is a gas, carbon, the soot is a solid, and water is a liquid. Even less, even less oxygen in this one. So you can see this is a way for this reaction to still proceed, even though it doesn't have enough oxygen to convert the carbon part of the fuel completely into carbon dioxide. And the interesting thing is if you took the carbon here that's being formed, that can react further. That can react with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and that will release more energy. But if you don't have enough oxygen to release that energy, then you are wasting that energy value of the fuel. So I've got not enough oxygen. So not all energy is released. The other bad thing is that, of course, carbon monoxide and carbon are both pollutants. So we don't want this incomplete combustion occurring. The reality is, though, when we burn in air, air is 20, about 20% oxygen. And that's simply not enough for all of the um, fuel to burn by complete combustion. So normally, if you burn in air, burning in air, you're going to get a mixture of all three of these. So you are always going to produce some carbon monoxide and you're likely to produce some carbon because you just simply don't have enough oxygen in the air. You can actually overcome this incomplete combustion problem by either burning in pure oxygen. Now that's not particularly um, you know, useful for a car engine. We don't feed pure oxygen into a car engine. We burn in air. But these days the fuel is injected into the cylinder as a very fine spray in very controlled amounts to make sure that you get the maximum possible complete combustion occurring and you really, really minimize the incomplete combustion. Anyway, that's the story on incomplete combustion. So I will see you guys in the next video.